Welcome to Curious Curiosities, where we talk about things that are rather curious. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. Before we begin today's episode, do be sure to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. It's free, and I would love to have you. For today's episode, I thought it would be fun to tell some ghost stories from Reddit. With spooky season fast approaching, I'm just so in the mood for a good spooky tale. And if you are too, stick around. Let's dive in, shall we? The first story is called The Walking Dead. I'm a psychiatric nurse and early in my career, I worked at a residential mental health facility. One of our residents was an elective mute, which means that he didn't, wouldn't, couldn't talk. But there were no medical reasons as to why. He had spoken earlier in his life and in fact seemed quite normal back then, with the exception of being close to seven feet tall. He'd been raised in the Deep South and joined the military when he was 19, but one night he vanished. He was declared a wall, and eventually he was declared missing and dead. Ten years later, a seven-foot-tall man walked into a VA hospital emergency room in my part of the Midwest and said to the receptionist, my name is Marion Duchene, and I've been dead for 10 years. Those were the last words he ever spoke. He was covered with dust, and he was wearing the same clothes he'd been reported to be wearing the night he vanished. His social security number had not been used, and he had no identification on his person. However, they were able to identify him, I guess via fingerprints. The family was notified, but they said they had already grieved their lost man and that whomever was claiming to be him simply could not be. They demanded not to be contacted again. Marion paced all day every day, moving his mouth that looked like talking or muttering, but no sound came out. He had an unnerving habit of throwing his head back with his mouth wide open as if he were laughing heartily, but not even a breath could be heard. If I talked to him, he appeared to listen periodically throwing his head back in that laughter-mimicking way of his. Various medications were tried, but they did not affect him either positively or negatively. Occupational therapy did nothing because Marion would just grin and, unless told to stay put, he'd get up and start pacing again. On my last day at that job, the last thing I saw was Marion pacing in the parking lot, throwing his head back to laugh. Later, I wondered if all along I'd been dealing with a ghost. All these years later, I still don't know. Very spooky indeed. Next up, it came for us in a graveyard. We were driving my friend's really old beat-up Subaru through a massive graveyard. We stopped and walked down a hill and came across a little pond. There was someone sitting on a rock on the other side of the pond. The figure was all black and we couldn't make out any features other than the fact it looked like a man who was wearing some old-style top hat. We stupidly waved and shouted, hi. He didn't show any acknowledgement and continued sitting still on the rock. All of a sudden, he jumped to his feet, started running to us on the water, and then vanished in thin water about halfway on the pond. My friends and I screamed and ran back to the car. The car wouldn't start and we heard something banging on the back of the car. It wasn't a constant bang, but every few seconds or so we'd hear it. Nobody was outside from what we could see in the dark, but something was making a noise on the car. I opened my phone and started dialing my mom to come give us a boost, but I had no service. None of us had any cell service. The next 30 minutes was spent trying to get her car started. No banging was heard afterwards, but we felt this heavy pressure around us. Finally, the car started and she hit the pedal to the metal. We sped out of the graveyard so fast. Immediately crossing the gates, all of our phones regained cell service. One thing I know for certain is that someone or something was out there and it was not an animal or a human. I may not sleep after that one. This one is called the Demon's Room. I worked as a nurse in a hospital's lockup unit. We had one older lady who swore she was being haunted and abused by a demon she would call Tiberius. 
So many crazy things happened while she was on the unit. We'd go into the room, do normal care, leave, and seconds later she'd start screaming bloody murder. We'd run into the room to find her looking like she'd been in a fight with a boxing champ. Bloody lip, black eye markings all over her body. No one ever saw her doing this stuff to herself. Things would get moved around the room by themselves. At one point, she was in protective restraints because the doctor thought she was hurting herself. There was no way she could have moved or done anything to herself by in these restraints, but new marks would always appear or her tray or cart would be across the room. The room was secure, so there was no way someone else was doing this. When we asked her questions, she'd just say, it was Tiberius. After she was discharged, we always had trouble with that room. If there was going to be a rapid response or code, it happened in that room. One night, a guard reported lights blinking on and off. It was that room. Thank you kindly for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I shall see you in the next episode of Curious Curiosities. Goodbye for now.